The Basel Committee for Banking Supervision proposed fundamental review of the trading book aims to address the management of risk and capital within financial firms' trading books. Specifically, it seeks to deal with what it considers to be the weaknesses in the current design of the regulatory capital framework as it relates to the trading book. By applying more rigorous qualification requirements for both the trading and banking books. The proposed changes are fundamental, potentially affecting a broad swathe of institution types and requiring significant infrastructure investments in order to comply. The first component to discuss is the changes to the trading book boundary. The BCBS proposes in effect to change the definition of the trading book. Under current rules, firms that buy an asset for trading purposes would typically hold that asset and its associated risk in its trading book where it would attract an 8% capital cover requirement. But should the market move against the asset and reduce the possibility of liquidating that asset at a profit, Firms are able to transfer it to their banking books, which are designed for longer term holdings and attract the lower 1.6% capital cover. To eliminate the temptation to arbitrage between books, the BCBS proposes introducing strict rules around what qualifies for inclusion in the trading book. Much hinges on the trading firm's intent, whether it acquires an asset either as part of a short term market play or as a longer term investment holding. Indeed, the proposed changes may mean that firms that currently don't consider that they have a trading book actually will have one under the new definition. The second component of the fundamental review of the trading book is the emphasis on the standardised model approach. Under existing rules, banks involved in proprietary trading have two choices when it comes to measuring their risk levels and applying them to capital adequacy calculations. They can work to get their internal models approved by the regulator and base their risk and regulatory capital levels upon those. Or they can take the standardised approach, adopting pre-approved models for their capital adequacy calculations. The regulators are placing a new emphasis on the standardised approach, which all market participants will be required to show to regulators. As a result, the standardised model will become the effective minimum requirement for capital calculations and most likely the default for comparison between banks, risk and capital levels. With their role as differentiator gone, proprietary models may disappear as banks' motivation for using them fades. While industry consultation on the proposed rules is still pending, much of what's being discussed is expected to make it to the final rulemaking and that may come into effect during 2017.